James Kaufman, World News Report. Today, today is December 11th, 2024. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, we've had three M-facing solar flares today, and we're going to go over those solar flares, and we're also in some sort of geomagnetic storm or disturbance. We're going to go over that situation as well. The first substantial solar activity we had today happened right at or peaked right at 604 UTC time. So last night about 104 Central it was an M1.9 solar flare and it was generated from sunspot AR3920. We'll go over its location very soon. But it's basically Earth-facing in the Northern Hemisphere. That was followed by an M2.7 blast at 10.06 UTC time, about 4 in the morning. And that also came from Sunspot 3920. I believe that's a simple Sunspot as well. Now lastly, we just had an M6.7 solar flare. Now, that blast was generated by Sunspot Group AR39112, a Beta Gamma Sunspot Group that's actually going around the far limb, but it does have that Parker Spiral Geomagnetic Connection to Earth. In other words, that's the part that Earth is connected geomagnetically that helps pull Earth away from the Big Bang i.e. in the sun as its magnet. If I didn't say so, that peaked at 1549, which is 1149 just a few moments ago. And yes, I am referring to 1149 Central Time. Now we have a lot of day left, so we can see some more action. It's currently 1800 UTC Time. Now, what's crazy is Sunspot 3922 gave us all the trouble yesterday, and now we're having all the trouble from Sunspot Group AR3920, which again is basically Earth-facing in the northern part or northern half of the Sun's hemisphere. A little bit strange. Looks like just about everything that's substantial came from AR3920, except for the last... Well, the last M flare, the M6.71, and that came from AR3912. Now, today, we have a 10% chance of having an X-class solar flare, which is strange because we have no delta sunspots on our Earth-facing star. A 55% chance of an M-class solar flare, that ship has sailed and a 99.999% chance of having a C-class solar flare because we are still maintaining that C-class baseline. Unbelievable now for months. So our M6.71 was also the biggest flare we've seen in the last 72 hours. Now, I don't have all the latest and greatest equipment. AIA is down, HMI is down, STO is down. So we're using what we have, which is LASCO, which is not an overachiever lately. And we're using GOES, which is our go-to and always has been. This is our gong intensogram. <laughs> Nowhere near as good as our HMTI intensogram. But we can see that we have two beta gamma sunspots. 3912 is actually the sunspot group that ripped the 6 point. 7-1 solar flare, M flare. Now it could have been stronger because it could have been slightly uh, eclipsed by the sun. But again, Earth's Parker spiral connection or geomagnetic connection is right to that area. And there's a good chance the energy could flow through our geomagnetic connection and actually be geoeffective towards Earth. Now, today we saw all the action come from up here at 3920. You can see it's green. That means it's a simple sunspot, either an alpha or a beta sunspot. And yesterday we had all of our activity come from 3922, which hasn't 
had a peep all day long. All right, here we are with our R2 radio blackout based on the M6.71 solar flare that just occurred here. And uh, M6.7 flare was observed at 11.59 UTC time from region 3912, just around the east limb. We did, in fact, get hit by the x-rays. So there will probably be an Earth component to this blast, although it was probably eclipsed by a good portion of the outgoing limb. Jumping over to our GO-16 solar ultraviolet imager. Some of these sunspot groups are hard to pick out. We have a directly Earth-facing coronal hole. We should see stronger coronal winds. We've seen them up around 500 kilometers per second lately. And we get to see that flare pop off right there. The M6.71. It looks like several flares popped off. But I think we all see that first flare there. The M6.71. Again, this is GO Solar Ultraviolet Imager. Pretty much our go-to and all we have right now. All right, heading over to Lasco C3. You know, I've really looked at this. There's no missing time, and I don't really see a coronal mass ejection except for the one coming out of the south that looks like it would have been generated by a sunspot AR3920. I don't see anything that's going to look directly earth-facing or brutal at all. Headed over to our D-Region Absorption Prediction Center. It's going to let us know how powerful these flares really were. This is going to be the M2.7 generated at 10.06 UTC time, 4.06 Central Time here last night from Sunspot 3920, Northern Hemisphere, directly Earth-facing. And I will show you the next one as well. That's going to be the larger flare that was generated right here. That one peaked at 1549. That was an M6.7. And remember, that was the departing sunspot group, AR3912. Now, I did think the second solar flare would generate more radio autonation and propagation. And, well, it does look like we got hit pretty hard over most all of South America and Central America. But I just don't see as hard of a hit as I was looking for. Don't worry, though. Everyone's getting an ample dose of radiation for their day. All right. So, over to our KP indexes. This tells us if we're having a geomagnetic storm. And at that point, we go, well, study our Discover satellite, which we will do. We see nothing really happening. All clear on the western front, on our boulder, Fredericksburg, our upgraded estimated planetary index used by NASA and NOAA. But when we get down to our most sensitive KP index, our college index, we see it measured a geomagnetic storm. For three hours of the day, followed by six hours of a geomagnetic disturbance. See what happened there. Headed over to Discover Real-Time Solar Wind Satellite. First off, I don't see much of anything whatsoever. Our plasma never goes anywhere near 10 centimeters cubed. We'll take a look at NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center to see what it says. But basically, it starts at around 1.0. And peaks up at around 4. And that really is our peak uh, for the day there. Let's see if we can get a little bit higher there. 4.4. Well, Shields are completely down. No space weather indications up here. So the winds started at 400 and really have done nothing. They're down at 375. Temperature is very, very mild also. So I see nothing that should have caused the College Index to actually report any type of solar storm or geomagnetic disturbance, period. Now, one of these blasts, either the M1.9 or the M2.7, looks like it generated a very light 
chrome as ejection, which I thought it might, might go south of planet. Planet Earth's in the yellow here. And you can see that it's moving out. Maybe better on this one here. And it looks like it, well, might hit Earth. That impact would be on the... And this is a guess again. Let's see. That impact would be on the 18th. Seven days out. Maybe 17th. Unbelievable that they would have plasma moving that slow. I'm not, not going for it, but that's what NASA's good word is what spiral says. Now these black and white ropes are our geomagnetic connections. You'll all see they're at that departing limb over there and Earth's geomagnetic connection also goes to that area. So the big M 6.71 solar flare might, might be geoeffective through our geomagnetic connection, our rope here, coming right back to deliver energy to Earth here. We'll keep our eyes out for that one, but they haven't even really mod well modeled a CME for that, although it just happened an hour or two ago. Jumping over to NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center, they got it pretty good today they started the solar winds at about five maybe six they have them down we started at one we went up to 4.5 if y'all remember so it's not too bad but they did just update this today you can tell but we're situated and then solar winds well they started out at about 400 here and I guess they go have them going up to about 425, which I think they did. And in the day, right about 400. So they did a pretty good job. But I think it was more like they kind of fell over into those predictions based on predictions they were making for the 9th and 10th. So that's what it looks like from here. All right, finishing off with the planets today here. All of these planets lit up. In pink, we have geomagnetic connections to. So we should be seeing earthquake activity. We're stuck right in the middle as the moon comes around in a day or two to be right in between, well, Jupiter, Earth, and our sun with Mercury here. Great connection. Mars here and Uranus. This is nothing but earthquake territory for planet Earth. With that said, Again, we've had three M-class solar flares, the largest on the departing limb, an M6.71. It doesn't look like we have any solar weather hittiness, no geomagnetic storms, and it looks like we have a good chance of some earthquake activity based on the planetary lineup itself. God bless, share, subscribe, and always remember that anything's possible in the bizarro world.